this is Lori and welcome to my series on the Pico W. Today we're going to talk about the analog to digital converter in our Pico. I've been exploring how the analog to digital converter works and how to try to get um, some better numbers out of it when using, for example, potentiometers. This all came from the episodes uh, that we did on the digital etch sketch where we had a lot of noise in our uh, potentiometers that we used to draw on our display. And I'm still trying to uh, perfect that project and so explored more about the analog to digital converter as a part of that. So I thought I'd share a few of the things that I've learned along the way. Our analog to digital converter on our Pico is a 12-bit successive approximation ADC. And successive approximation tells us a little bit about how the analog to digital converter takes our input signal, which is a voltage level between 0 and 3.3 volts, and turns it into a digital number. There are three uh, analog channels on our Pico. They're over here. This is the pinout diagram, and you can see they're 26, 27, and 28. So we have three of them to use. And uh, it's 12-bit, which means it should return a value of 0 to 4,095. But we read it with this function, read underscore u16, which actually scales it into a 16-bit number from 0 to 65,535. So that little uh, difference between 12-bit and 16-bit really was bothering me as I was doing some homework for Paul McCorder's Pico W course. And I really wanted to understand why are we using a 16-bit read function when we're only getting 12-bit of resolution from our analog to digital converter. And um, I did some searching around, Googling, as all of us do, and I found some information on a Raspberry Pi forum where someone was asking a very similar question to mine. And uh, someone responded to say that it, it does this um, using something called Taylor Expansion. Um, and uh, Taylor Expansion is a complex uh, mathematical topic, and I just put a brief summary here. Um, of what Taylor series expansions are. And so that wasn't really helpful in fully understanding how does it take my number from 0 to 495 and turn it into a number from 0 to 65,000. Um, so the person actually was uh, wanting to learn more and, and finally uh, got a response here with this nice diagram of uh, a 12-bit number in binary and a 16-bit number in binary and showing how that read function converts the 12-bit number from the ADC into a 16-bit number. So it's really pretty simple in concept. You take those uh, uh, numbers here, A, B, C, D, and you copy them to the end to get into a 16-bit number. and that's supposed to be um, aligned with the Taylor series. Uh, the reason why is MicroPython is written to be portable among different boards, not just for the Pico, but for many other boards, and they all have uh, different ADCs that have different resolutions. So they wanted to write just one function to do the reading, and so they take every uh, board's ADC and scale it to a 16-bit number if that's what's needed. Uh, so that was good, and I said, okay, I've got a good idea of how this is changing. And I started to do just a little thought experiment and said, well, halfway between 12-bit uh, would be 2048. And if you played around with binary for a little while, you'll figure out halfway in between for 12-bit would be a 1 at the start and then all zeros. And then I said, well, halfway for a 16-bit number, it's the same sort of concept, one at the start, and then all the zeros you need for a 16-bit binary number. Now, if I do the uh, math uh, to uh, put in 2048, and I use this approach, I actually get um, this number, which of course is not halfway. It's a different number than the halfway point. That actually uh, equals in decimal 32,776. So it's close, but it's not exactly equal. So it is an approximation um, that is used here to do the scale up. And um, 
you know, that could be a little bit of a reason why we might have some noise um, when we're using this analog to digital converter. We saw how the read U16 method works in converting the 12-bit number to the 16-bit number, um, but maybe we would like to control which number we're actually getting. Like, for example, wouldn't it be better, in my mind, to get uh, the 12-bit number that is originally coming from our ADC, and we can do that. So I just show a little example here of setting up a potentiometer and reading it, and if we wanted to take that now 16-bit number that was converted when it did this read, we can drop it back down to a 12-bit by doing this bitwise operation and taking off those four bits. And that'll get us the value that actually came out of our ADC on our Pico. Now, if you want to go back again, you can do this using bitwise operations with this uh, equation here, and that'll get us back to um, what the read U16 function was doing. Let's take a look at that in code. I took that uh, simple code and just put it into a MicroPython program here, and I have my uh, potentiometer here hooked up to a, a Pico, just a plain Pico, because we don't need the W for this one. This is just a little um, uh, experimental uh, deck to play around with your Pico and try different things out that I got from Pimeroni. Uh, she's very useful for that. Um, so I just got the, the potentiometer hooked up, and it, these are the uh, uh, ground and power, and then uh, you can connect into the ADC uh, pins right here. So that's what I'm doing. And uh, you can see here in the code that um, importing the modules, setting up the potentiometer, just as I showed, going to have read it, and then I'm going to convert it back uh, using the shift by four bits uh, to the 12 bit, and then I'm going to use that equation to get back to the 16 bit. And then I'm going to print all that out just so we can see if it's really working the way we thought. Let's go ahead and run it. And there we go. All right, so I have it all the way on the low side. And I'll just turn it up maybe about a quarter of the way or so. And we can see. And so you can see there's a nice match here, right? There's a match between what I read and I'm getting back exactly the same value because I'm going through this 12-bit conversion into the 16-bit conversion. And we can see that that uh, math worked out. So that's nice. So I'm not an expert at all at this binary operations. Still trying to learn a little bit. So that's about halfway. And then we can take it up all the way. I have a big sleep in here, so it's not adapting very quickly. But there we are at the max. And we can see we're at the max for our 12-bit, too. Well, almost. A little, little bit of noise. And we can see that. We definitely saw that when we did the Etch-a-Sketch project, too. Uh, bane of my existence. Drives me crazy. All right, so that just shows us that we've, we know how to do the math and how to get back and forth. I really wanted to understand how successive approximation worked in an analog to digital converter. And I first delved into this when I was taking uh, the Raspberry Pi class from Paul McCorder. And I put this uh, series of slides together to uh, solidify my understanding. In that case, I was using an 8-bit ADC rather than a 12-bit that we have on the Pico. But the idea is the same, and working with only 8 bits is a little simpler. This is the diagram that made the most sense to me. And now I'm not an electrical engineer. Um, I'm new to this. So uh, this is my basic understanding of how successive approximation works. We have our input voltage. And we just demonstrated using a potentiometer uh, to be the device that's going to control the input voltage we're putting into our analog to digital converter. So we could be inputting anywhere between 0 and 3.3 volts with our Pico, and the potentiometer allows us to sort of dial in between those two numbers. So that's the input voltage coming into the ADC. The ADC samples that and holds onto it uh, using a capacitor, I think. And then it puts it into a comparator. And a comparator uses a reference voltage on this side and the input voltage coming from, for example, our potentiometer. And it looks to see, is the input voltage higher or lower than the reference voltage? And that's all the comparator does. And it outputs either a 0 or a 1, depending on whether it's higher or lower. There's some control logic in there. 
And then it has this successive approximation register, which keeps track of as it each time it makes a a guess at what the um, voltage, the input voltage is. It keeps track as it uh, goes through and does all the um, changing of the reference voltage to try to figure out what this input voltage is. And it's interesting enough that it only takes it eight times to figure that out. Eight times will it change the reference voltage to figure out what this input voltage is. And that is connected to the eight bits. So it'll work through that. Let's, uh, let's see how that's done using uh, a guessing game as a way to understand this successive approximation. Here's the guessing game we're going to use to try to understand how this successive approximation works. I'm going to be the input voltage. And in an 8-bit ADC, I can be a number between 0 and 255, representing 0 to 3.3 volts. And you're going to be the ADC, and you're going to try to guess my number. Think about what you might guess and what strategy you might use to be as efficient as possible. I'm going to tell you up front that my number is 23, so we can see how this works. If you think about it for a little while, the best strategy might be to guess a number in between 0 and 255 halfway so that you can immediately, on the very first guess, eliminate half of the numbers that are possible. And that's exactly the kind of strategy that successive approximation uses. So your first guess is 128. And I respond to you that, nope, I'm lower than that. And I give you a zero in binary to represent lower. You think, well, that really worked pretty well. Let's keep using this strategy. Now the number could be between zero and 127. So let's guess halfway in between that. And we get 64. And I respond still lower with a zero. Keep going with this strategy. Guess a 32, still lower. Now you guess a 16, and I tell you, well, I'm higher or equal to that number, and I give you a 1. Now you've limited the range to 16 up to 31. So you still use the same approach. You go in between those two numbers, 24, and I say lower and give you a 0. Now we're really starting to narrow in on this number. Guess in between again, and you get a 20. I say higher or equal to. Now it can only be 20, 21, 22, or 23. That's the only numbers left. Go in between again, 22. And I say it's higher or equal to. Now it's either 22 or 23. And with my last guess, I guess 23. And I tell you it's higher or equal to and give you another one. And now you know it must be 23. Now, if we take all these responses that have been stored in that successive approximation registry and we put them into a binary number, that binary number turns out to be 23 in decimal. <laughs> wow, <laughs> math, that, a, that a algorithm is pretty cool. I mean, it just works. Isn't that awesome? It's like magic or something. And that's how successive approximation works. To bring this home, let's come back to our uh, diagram of our ADC. And as you can see, what happens is it starts with the first guess being halfway in between the min and max voltage. And then it get registers and keeps track of the zeros and ones from the comparator and adjusts the voltage each time to give the new reference voltage based on the previous round's response. It works uh, pretty well, and I think many of the analog to digital converters that we run into in hobby electronics use this approach to um, figuring out what the input voltage is. Well, I still haven't found the absolute best way to reduce noise in the potentiometers yet. Certainly have used averaging, and um, carefully choosing whether to update or not based on where we were previously. Um, I might, I've also tried uh, scaling back to the 12-bit value. That maybe helps a little, but it certainly doesn't entirely 
remove all the noise. So it may be that our digital Etch-a-Sketch kind of pushes the boundary of what we can do with the, uh, these potentiometers. I am thinking about maybe buying um, a little more expensive potentiometer to see if maybe that might also help. But uh, my quest continues to make that digital Etch-a-Sketch uh, perfect in my eyes. But uh, that'll be for another day. Thanks for joining me.